Hello and welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. I'm currently playing Baryonic Predicament by Miga. This is part two. Click the annotation on the screen right now to take you back to the beginning if you missed it. So this is a puzzle stroke combat survival mod. And finally we have some decent combat. So this is the first arena I suppose you could call it. It's fairly simple, they get more and more difficult as the mod goes on. I actually did fairly well here, I've played this uh, arena a fair few times during my time with this mod and uh, it can get pretty nasty. This time it seemed most of the combine seemed to attack up the stairs into my position so it got very very easy to take them all out. But usually I get involved in a firefight around this area here and it can get quite brutal. So now we're presented with a locked door and some kind of contraption on the floor which looks important. And of course using the colour red again, Mega tells us that this is important and we should probably use it. There's a, another part we need to find as well that's fairly obscure and quite difficult to find. It's uh, I remember having a lot of trouble with it. And again it does have the colour red on it so it does kind of stick out in the environment but it's very well hidden. <laughs> it took me a while to find it the first time, let's just say that. But what I love so much about Migger's puzzles is that it kind of teaches the player early on that red is important, look for receptacles and contraptions because they are important. And then it kind of leaves the kind of a how, how do they work, up to the player. And I think this is really important because it's very easy to get stuck into a kind of design mentality of I'm going to teach the player exactly what to do and then they can just do it. And for a player that's simply like giving them a list of things to do and then making them do it and that's not really that fun and while it's certainly not fun to walk around completely lost and you know aimless and frustrated it's kind of the opposite to that is just following a task list given to you by a level designer which again isn't much fun either and there's there's somewhere in the middle of that where you give the player um, something to grab onto so Miga has given us this whole red is important and look for, look for contraptions kind of mentality but how they actually work is kind of up to the player to, to work out and I think that's really really important so while they have a kind of list given to them from the designer of you know find the parts to open this door actually finding the parts and constructing the device to you know proceed is uh, it's an act of discovery by the player like okay how does this contraption work? I know I know I, I need to collect all the parts for it, but I need to work out how it works and assemble it. And that's where the play comes in, and you can be you can kind of explore that and find out how it works. I think that's something this mod does really, really well. It it avoids becoming just a you know a, a list of things to do. It actually becomes quite fun actually working out all the different mechanics for the puzzles, which is excellent. Speaking of puzzles, so this is a weight puzzle. I like the fact that this puzzle is kind of used in two different ways. So, first of all, you have to weigh this object down to open the door. And then, once you get to the other side, you have to take all the weights out so the door closes again so you can proceed. It's getting kind of a dual use out of the same mechanic, which is uh, excellent to see. So if I remember correctly, in, in the beta version of this room, uh, you see there's this see-through wall on the side there with the vent in it. In the beta that wall wasn't see-through and uh, I got completely stuck in this room because you just couldn't see the vent there so there was no kind of goal for the player to aim towards like, okay, how do I get there? It was just kind of, it just looked like a dead end, it wasn't really clear what you had to do so Mega made this wall transparent and uh, fixed a lot of problems there. That's a very good solution. Now we get to another one of his crazy puzzles that make absolutely no sense but are still really fun to use. Of 
I love explosions, apparently. So we've got a locked door. And some kind of contraption. And oh look, a barrel which almost exactly fits in here. I wonder what I have to do. <laughs> Again, notice that the, the actual barrel of the uh, quote-unquote gun is red. So again, it stands out. We know that red is important. Button helps as well. <laughs> now we get on to our next arena. So the difficulty kind of ramps up a little bit now. Again, this compared to later fights in the mod, this is still very, very easy. It's all on kind of one level. There's no Z-axis fighting here, really. There's lots of cover to move around in. And there's no real secondary mechanics yet in this area, it's just kind of straight up fight the combine and win. I really like the look of this area, you've got the great kind of sun shafts coming down from the uh, skylights above, which looks very very cool. If I, I suppose if I had to pick a room which sums up Migger's kind of visual style, I think this room would be it. The giant contrast between light and dark, you've got all the different lights all over the place. So stereotypically Mega. One thing that perhaps would have been nice in some of these areas is there's no real kind of side areas to explore to find supplies or kind of hidden caches of ammo and health and things like that. Uh, it would have been nice to just have, even if it's just like, you know, hidden behind a few crates here and there, it would have been nice to actually have some kind of exploratory gameplay where you can find supplies. Here's another puzzle area. Notice we have the red, the red, uh, I suppose, tabletop here. Then the gameplay is kind of, how do we remove all the obstructions from the laser? And the laser powers this door. So again, very, very simple. Now I don't know what it was about this room, but in the beta I got stuck here for way longer than I care to admit on the internet. Which is kind of irrelevant because I've just admitted it on the internet. But uh, it never really occurred to me that these crates would be movable. I was kind of looking for the standard, kind of you know, wooden Half-Life 2 crates. Uh, I wasn't expecting these uh, brush-based versions with different textures. I really thought they were just kind of a, a static prop against the wall. I never actually considered trying to pick them up. <laughs> and this is why kind of understandable visual language is so important, because idiots like me just don't explore things fully, fully enough most of the time. I think perhaps if these crates had been used earlier in the level, and perhaps the player saw them be moved around and perhaps had to move one of them out of the way of a door or something, it would just show the player that you know these these crates can actually be used and moved around. So idiots like me would, would have uh, had the slap around the face to notice it. <laughs> now I grab the uh, crossbow. This is just straight up telling the player what to do because this idea of bouncing crossbow bolts off walls to activate things is so kind of strange and never really had to do it before in a Half-Life mod. But I can recall anyway, I'm sure there's been one somewhere or another where you've had to do it. Maybe research and development or something, I can't remember, but just a straight up picture on the wall showing that bolts bounce on walls is probably required here. I can't really imagine any other way of doing it. And even then, it's really hard to actually aim the bolts where you want them to go. It's just kind of trial and error. Luckily, there's an infinite supply of bolts there. 
And again, we know that the generators uh, destroy force fields when they turned off, or just depower whatever they're connected to. Would have been nice to have a, a sound effect there, there though, that actually tells the player that the force field is off, because I didn't actually notice that it turned off when, the first time I played this, because there was no sound. Now I have yet another new mechanic. This one I really, really like. So we had the laser puzzle in the other room, where we saw that the laser gets bounced around the room and then goes into a receptacle like that. So we know that the laser can power things up by going into this receptacle, but now we have to work out how to get it there. And we, we've got these uh, little receptacles that we can put things in, and this kind of stands out in the environment. It's, it's very, very shiny. Turns out it's a mirror. <laughs> so again, Miga uses what he's already taught the player, so we understand these lasers. We understand that we need to search the environment to find uh, things to put in these contraptions, but it leaves it up to the player to actually put all the pieces together and work it out. I love that mechanic, it's really really cool. He uses it again a few times as well, it's really really fun. Now we've got another fight in this arena. Ups the ante a bit this time. Again, one thing I think that is missing from a lot of these fights here is just the lack of music. This should be kind of an exciting moment, but the lack of music kind of hurts the, uh, the sense of action, I think. by the soldiers, no problem. And the, one, the one thing I didn't like about this, this section here is that it's not really clear where you should go afterwards. Uh, I explored around this area for a while and kind of got a little bit confused about where I was meant to go next. Now there is a kind of visual aid, as you'll see in a moment. <laughs> got this giant red and green flashing light denoting this is open. But I just feel like uh, player should be drawn to that more naturally. I feel like there should be some kind of mechanic in there that draws the player to the door and sees it open. Yeah, I mean, I guess it works. It just depends how long it takes you to actually walk over to that corner and see the flashing light. I just feel like there should be some kind of aid to get the player to go over there quicker. Yeah, this doesn't look good. <laughs> This is where things get even crazier. Just when you think this mod couldn't get any stranger, it, it does. <laughs> this is where I come back to the fact that there's no real story in this mod. It's just kind of a series of bizarre tests. But then you have this strange section that just ups the ante of the strangeness even more. But it's never really explained or kind of alluded to in any way. It's just kind of strange stuff happens, deal with it. There's nothing to really grab onto with regard to any kind of narrative or story here, which I really would have liked to see. I mean, it's all presented really, really well. It looks great, but there's just nothing... There's no substance to grab onto. It just kind of ends up being meaningless, because there's no uh, context for it. And I love this section here because Migga's kind of explained to the player that this section is fucking weird. <laughs> and then he plays with that a bit here. So we got the uh, orange crank handle on the wall. And uh, I think any player of Half-Life 2 knows what that means. So we find the uh, crank handle for it. But it doesn't work. This is strange, isn't it? I love I love the way the floor goes down like that. It's just I had a giant smile on my face when that happened. <laughs> Such a great way to mess with the player. You just don't expect it at all. You're already confused at the fact that this handle won't connect to the wall and then 
Having the floor just lower like that as well, it's, it's brilliant. Here we go, we've got another laser puzzle. So again, the player understands all the mechanics now, so... This room's just a case of how do I get the laser to get into the receptacle down here. Now this... I have no idea what all these beeps and the... sounds are. I really want to say that it's some kind of secret, and that you have to count the beeps and enter it into a keypad somewhere to open a door or something for a secret. But I really didn't have the patience to uh, count all the beeps and work out any code or anything. Maybe you guys had more luck, but yeah. From what I can tell, I, I couldn't really see any kind of keypad doors or anything in this area. So I don't really know if that's the answer. Although it's just kind of here to mess with the player. I really don't know, but I like it. Even though I couldn't work it out. <laughs> It's fun to have a mystery every now and then, as long as it's not part of the main progression. If the player can't work it out, then there's no way to proceed. That's not good. <laughs> but uh, if it's just a fun side thing like that, it's great. So, collecting up all the mirrors, combining them all, and there we go. This area reminds me the most of Portal, especially the way the kind of walls open here and you can get behind the scenery. Very, very aperture science alike. Now it's time for another puzzle. <laughs> so, behind one of these bars is a, the objective. I think it's the first set of bars the player sees when they come through the door actually. And uh, there's also a hole in the ceiling which is the way into the room. And this is kind of, this is all in the first room so the player notices it instantly. It's like right in view as you come through the door. So the player has the objective straight away. Get into that room and uh, activate the button. And the gameplay here is just how do I do that? And it's fairly simple. And then we've got uh, using the boxes again as a mechanic to get back out of the room afterwards. It can be a little bit fiddly to kind of stack them in such a way that they form steps. As you can see. <laughs> I think perhaps using the wall as a kind of brace would be a great idea, but guess I wasn't feeling particularly clever when I recorded this footage. <laughs> I really like the lighting in this room, so you've got that... The, kind of the strongest light in the room is set behind those bars, so you've got the, the shadows of all the bars stretching across the floor and the walls. That looks really, really cool. Now we have to work out how to open this door. I love the way there's a dent in the grate there, just to draw the player's eyes down. That opens that door for us. You guessed it, it's time for another puzzle! <laughs> so, the player kind of already understands these floor uh, panels. These ones are slightly different because they have lights on them. So, I think it's fair to assume that the player knows that these will raise up. It's just a question of how do I get them to raise. Now, I like the fact that they do have lights on them, otherwise I don't think you'd notice them otherwise. They're kind of hidden in the water. I think it's a case of just exploring around and finding ways to raise these platforms up. I think that's very, very self-explanatory in this area.
I love this little puzzle here. I think it's great. I mean, in a real environment, again, it makes absolutely no sense, as, as is the case with most of Migger's puzzles. But that's just a piece of gameplay. I think it's really, really fun. I mean, it's simple, but it's it's just fun. <laughs> you can probably just distill that that Migger's puzzles down in a, that one sentence. They're just fun to do. The only thing I don't like about this is that you hit the button and there's really no feedback as to what it does. You hear a little sound, but you have no idea what it is. So as you can see now, this is raised up green lights instead of red, so... Cool. Yeah, I think it just needs a little bit more when you press the button, it would be nice if there was like a camera on the wall or something which showed the uh, the platform raising so you have that instant feedback like, right, okay, I understand what these buttons are doing. And now we have the classic Mega wall puzzle. <laughs> he loves these things. I think they're in every single one of his maps that I've played. There's been some kind of uh, wall puzzle involving glass like this. So one button activates a, a ball to come out the side and the other button knocks it upwards. And we just have to hit the uh, receptacles at the top there. It's very, very pong. <laughs> Unfortunately I'm terrible at it. So that's both platforms raised. And again, I think the combat here is a little bit lacking in presentation. Would have been great if one of the hunters kind of dropped down right in front of you there as you're about to exit out back into this area. Interesting presentation of enemies when you start a combat is really, really important. If the enemies are just kind of all standing around in a room, then, uh, I mean, that can kind of work depending on where they're standing and kind of if you can get an interesting combat right out the bat. But generally you want to present the enemies in a much more interesting way. Uh, kind of introduce them with a little bit of a a build up a little bit of story for instance even if it's just something like combined breaking down doors or you know uh repelling down walls or something it just makes the whole combat more interesting and intense if you walk into a room and uh, there's just a bunch of enemies standing around waiting for you it's it's kind of bizarre it's a bit of an anti climax in a game like half life i mean in games like quake you don't really have a choice because that's what enemies do they stand around until the player walks into view <laughs> But uh, in Half-Life you have a lot more creative control over how you present enemies. So more and more puzzles. Anyone, anyone that's ever been on a pier in the UK is probably familiar with this. This is why I'm so good at it. <laughs> I've lost so much money on these games over the years. Brighton Pier, wow. Bringing back childhood memories. <laughs> I think everyone understands what this is, so be through this. And that about brings us to the end of part two actually, so I'll see you in part three. It should be coming out very soon.